is what remains of Concord. One of the world's finest examples of modern engineering is now just a tangled heap of charred rubber, aluminium, melted plastic, and fractured hydraulics. The French investigators separate and identify every fragment. Among these burned remains lie the crucial clues to the cause of Concorde's crash. Within hours, the French Bureau of Air Accidents team recover the black boxes. These devices are carried on all airliners to record important technical data and, crucially, the pilot's conversation from the cockpit. They analyze the black boxes. They hear no sound of an explosion. It's clear to them terrorism is not to blame. The investigators are forced to look for a new lead. They focus on the last minute engine repair Captain Marty orders just before takeoff. They know Concorde returned from New York the previous day with a faulty thrust reverser on engine number two. Thrust reversers help to slow the planes down after they've landed. Investigators analyze the flight data recorder closely but find no evidence that a faulty thrust reverser could cause the accident. The pressure to find an answer increases. Until they do, the French authorities ground all Air France Concorde flights. The spotlight is now on the 120 seconds from the start of Concorde's final takeoff. Captain John Hutchinson has flown hundreds of Concorde takeoffs. Now, once you've lined up on the runway, the captain will then punch on the stopwatch and open the throttles fully. The captain's job is to keep straight down the runway. The co-pilot's job is to do the speed calls. And the flight engineer is sitting there and he's monitoring all the instruments. In particular, this bank of instruments here, which are the engine instruments. Data from the black boxes makes it clear that everything is normal until Concorde reaches 323 kilometers per hour. Concorde is now only 79 seconds from disaster. Data recorders reveal a sudden loss of power in both engines under the left wing. Immediately, the black box picks up the dramatic warning from the control tower. Air France 4590, you have the planes behind you. Despite the warning, pilot Christian Marty has passed the point of no return. There's not enough tarmac to stop safely. He has to take off. He pulled back on the control column to rotate the airplane up to its nose-up angle of 12.9 degrees. And he was having problems with the left-hand engines, not producing the power they should have. And he would have been working very hard, trying to control the airplane, trying to get speed. But of course, he was being overwhelmed by the, these problems uh, on the left-hand engines. The engines become the new focus of the investigation. Why did they lose power at such a critical time? Just two minutes into its journey, Air France Concorde flight AF4590 crashes, killing 113 people. A devastating blow to the world's first supersonic airliner. Using advanced computer graphics based on the official report, we go deep into the investigation to unravel the deadly chain of events. Investigators know that two left engines lose power as Concorde passes 323 kilometers per hour on the runway. But why? Then, an important new clue. The French investigators find several fragments of tire on the runway. One of them weighs four and a half kilograms. 
tests quickly confirm they belong to Concorde. It's a significant lead. Why? Because Concorde's tires inflate to extremely high pressures, which make them more likely to burst than other aircraft, especially during takeoff and landing. Pilot John Hutchinson explains. And in fact, when the captain pulls back to rotate, he's actually compressing the undercarriage into the runway, so there's even more stress on the tires and the wheels at that particular point. This additional pressure makes Concorde's tires even more vulnerable. Now they're onto something. The French accident investigators go back through the records and discover that for Concorde, tire blowouts are far from rare. They identify over 50 cases of tire burst on takeoff and landing over 24 years. One of the worst incidents involved another Air France Concorde, this time at Washington's Dulles Airport in 1979. Bill Lightfoot was a passenger on Concorde that day. I could see a, a big ragged hole in the wing with like pieces of aluminum or a metallic alloy and a lot of liquid pouring out of that uh, of the hole that had been ripped in the wing. The official report into this accident found that the tire burst during taxiing. Then the exposed metal wheel got very hot and exploded just before takeoff. The plane took off, but 20 minutes later returned safely to the ground. The plane survived this scare, but it caused a major overhaul of tire safety. Concorde engineers installed sensors to detect underinflated tires, modified inspection procedures for wheels before every flight, and most importantly, as aviation expert David Learmont explains, developed stronger tires that can carry twice their normal load. The requirement was that in test flights, you should be able to have a complete tire blowout during the takeoff run, and that you should be able to complete the takeoff with no tires left. And that is what the wheels um, subsequently were, and never again did a wheel fail. That is, until 18 years later in Paris, when something goes very wrong. Despite all the safety measures, one of Concorde's tires explodes in fragments. Investigators dig deeper. They re-examine all the debris found on the runway and then make the most important discovery of the investigation. This 43 centimeter mystery strip of metal. When you match the 43 centimeter strip of metal to the damage on Concorde's tire, it's a perfect fit. Suddenly, the whole inquiry now depends on the source of this metal. Where did it come from? It takes five weeks of painstaking detective work, comparing it to the thousands of parts that make up aircraft. Then, a breakthrough. They discover the metal strip comes from the engine mounting of a DC-10. The flight log from Paris reveals a Continental Airlines DC-10 took off five minutes before Concorde. They track down the plane to Houston, Texas, and incredibly find the engine has a missing part. It's the metal strip fitted 16 days earlier during maintenance on the DC-10. When David Learmount first sees the photographs of the strip of metal, he's astonished. It had really rough edges, and this was not just rough edges because Concorde had run over it. It had been cut roughly. The edges were not straight, not even when it was made. The other thing is that it had holes drilled in it for putting screws or rivets through. And these were all over the place. 